Today, we have the Ballad of Denise on the Beach. Oh. <laughs> oh, lady. It was not good. It yeah. was not good. Yeah, we had a, we had a little beach visit, and uh, we're here to talk about it. And, uh, yeah, there's some things we probably shouldn't talk about about that day. Oh, no, I'm bringing it all up today on Skip Town All-Stars. We have Anna Maria Island, Florida as well as tips on having a sustainable travel experience. How about that? We're Echo. Oh, let's, I'm, I'm excited to find out how Echo we are. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boys. Hey listeners, ever wonder what it would be like to blow up your comfort zone at the tender age of 50? Well, we did just that. When our last kid went off to college, we hit the road in search of a new hometown. Now we bounce from city to city and bring you along for the ride. This is the Skip Town All-Stars podcast. What's up, All-Stars? Welcome back to another episode of Skip Town All-Stars. Psyched to have you with us today. We got a hot episode, hot off the presses for you. Uh, Before we get into all that, please like, subscribe, rate. We're on YouTube. We're on Spotify. We are on Apple Podcasts. Find us wherever you are and show us some love. Hit a few buttons, wouldn't you please? Uh, How are we doing, Denise Gordon? Oh, look at that. Full name. (laughs) My full name. I'm doing great. Um, When you said this episode is hot, it isn't just like... It was hot. You see what I did there? Yeah, I totally see what you did. Yeah. yeah. We are in the Podcast Doctor Studios in Orlando, Florida. And as always, we have our good friend, Producer Phil, with us. How you doing today, Producer Phil? Is that my name now? Producer, producer Phil. Phil. I'm, uh-huh. I'm very formal today. Yeah. Denise Gordon, I, I need producer a, I need Phil. a tie. Like, what's you do. going on? Jeez. I need my LinkedIn photo shoot. You do. You do need <laughs> yeah. a LinkedIn photo shoot. Good to see you guys. Good to see you. Uh, okay, so Phil, I have a quick question for you. Okay. How long have you lived in Florida? I've been in Florida since 2006, so almost 20 years. Yeah. 18 years, uh-huh. yeah, for a while. And have you ever heard of a place called Anna Maria Island? Nope, sounds like WPS. <laughs> <laughs> it is WPS. Yes, and for those of you that are just tuning in for the first time ever in your entire life, WPS means white people's stuff. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so today spoken like true white people white people stuff can y'all get like a, some merchandise that says that like just wps oh yeah we should and then like on the back it should be like a picture sh- of phil you would know you should if you know, know you know made. it should be like it, it should be wps and on the back it's just the, the the letters for if you know you know oh. if you know you know <laughs> i think that's great um okay so anna maria island is in florida and it is on the gulf side of the state uh how did we come about Anna Maria Island. Do you do you know any? Do you know this? I actually do not know. You just got in the car. Can. You literally just got in the car. It was your classic Jimmy James vacation where I just said, "Where are we going again?" The night before, and then I packed a pair of flip flops, some swimming trunks, and a shirt to wear to dinner. <laughs> yes, that was pretty much what you did pack. Uh, so. I had never heard of Anna Maria Island, and my friend Carly and her husband Mike were coming to visit us uh, in Florida while we are hanging out here right now before we leave for our next city. And a year ago, she sent me a reel from Instagram, and she asked me, do you know where this place is? And the reel looked like somewhere in the Caribbean. It was beautiful white sand beaches, the water was blue, it looked like it was the Bahamas or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had no idea. I had to look at the description, and it said Anna Maria Island. So then I had to go, you know, to Google, look at maps, and see where the heck is Anna Maria Island, Florida. And I found it. It is just south of St. Petersburg on the Gulf side of the state. And I thought to myself, maybe one day, like, we'll go visit, you know, uh, just kind of, like, kept it in my back pocket. And then uh, Carly and her husband, Mike, were coming to visit. It's her birthday. And I thought, I'm going to find that video she sent me a year ago. And we should do that for her birthday because she was really interested in it. You know how you always complain about how I run out of storage space on my phone? Yeah. It's because, like, stuff like that. Like, I don't get rid of that. Now, if I had not had that reel that I did not save that from her text message a year ago... I never would have, like, we never would have gone. (laughs) Okay. So, you know, all the times that you make fun of me, some of it is, like, beneficial. 
So I guess so. In this in, in this particular case, it paid off one out of a thousand. No, I, I say normally a lot of it's stuff. me staying up until two a.m. clearing off your phone for you. That hasn't happened in a long time. What's what's the most what's the most stuff in her phone? Because my wife's phone is all all screenshots. Oh, interesting. Because how how she does her shopping, which oh. is she sees something like Denise, you know, she'll see a, a reel and she'll screenshot it. Okay. Or she sees oh. a product or something and she'll screenshot it, or you know anything. That's so no, her, her, say her yours are videos. Yeah, mine, yours mine are videos. Mine are videos and text messages. Like if you look at my storage, what is like taken up? It's usually messages. Mine and, are old podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> surprise. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so anyway, I pulled it out and I said to Carly. You know, she was getting ready to head out to to visit us. And I said, hey, remember this reel you sent? Let's go visit Anna Maria Island. Right. And, um, and that's how it came about. And that's how it came about. So Carly and Mike arrived from Los Angeles. We picked them up, had a few great days hanging out at our place. And uh, the morning of, it was time to head out to San Santa Maria No, you Island. don't even know where we went. You literally don't even know where we went. Anna Maria Island. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah. Anna Maria Island. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about Anna Maria Island. Let me, let me tell you one thing about Anna Maria He just came along for the ride, so it's, we're not even going to listen to him. It's west of Bradenton. So if you've ever heard of Bradenton, Florida, it's right off the coast, right? And south of uh, St. Petersburg. So most you people... I know, but most people know St. Petersburg. Who knows Bradenton? I don't know Bradenton. So Wait, Bradenton? actually, I do. I'm a car guy. There's a track in Bradenton. Okay. Yeah. But if someone said St. Pete or Bradenton... I would, I would know St. Pete. It's not Bradenton. Yeah. Bradenton. Bradenton. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, Anna Maria Island is only seven miles north to south. It's really small. You can literally walk it. Really? Yeah. And it looks like it's truly in the Caribbean. Like you would be at a, I don't know, like a Turks and Caicos or something. It's like, it, it's sand, not sand overly crowded. Sand is powdery crowded. white. Yeah. This, go ahead. Sand is powdery white. Uh, Ooh. very balmy. Oh my gosh. It felt like the Caribbean. It was like the, uh, what is that called? The UV index. Oh, oh my God. It no. was like blistering that day. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it was gorgeous. It was nothing but sky. You know, uh, if you sail out far enough, you're going to eventually hit Texas, I guess. But, yeah. um, you know, the golf was beautiful that day. The water was blue. Everything was great. Here's what's crazy. We're in and out of Florida quite a bit. And everyone I've asked about Anna Maria Island, I like two people knew where, knew where it was and even had even heard of it. Like you've lived here for 20 years. You've never heard of it. You know, now that you said that, I think I think we've seen the same Instagram reel. Because <gasps> like I've seen, you know, this it's the trend where all the all the young white girls are like, hey, <laughs> yep. check out all these hidden gems in Florida. And then they spoil it for the, the hidden gem. It's not hidden anymore. So not right. everybody's going to go there. And we're doing the so same I thing. So I think I think I know what... Anna Maria Isle or Santa Maria? It's Anna Maria. Santa Maria. <laughs> Anna Maria. The Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. Okay. So, yeah, I think I, think I know. You've probably seen it. Yeah. 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 It's, you've probably seen it. So, um, the interesting thing about uh, Anna Maria Island is that there are actually several beaches on the island. So, the island consists of three beaches. We stayed on a beach called Holmes Beach. Holmes Beach. Mm -hmm. Then All there's right. Bradenton Beach, which is the beach that brings you uh, into the island. It's like the main beach. And then there's also Anna Maria Beach, but that's on the other side of the island. So if you're looking at a map and you're looking at the island, we were technically on the west side of this little island. Yeah. And Anna Maria Beach is on the east side of the island. And oh. there's also um, an area called Bean, B-E-A-N, point which is the most northern part of the island and um we didn't make it there <laughs> we actually stayed at Holmes beach because for us it was like a gem there was no one on that beach there are a handful of reasons we didn't make it there okay so let's just start out by saying uh we let's love our, we love our friends carly and mike but they uh they like the party party and they uh, do. we so, can't we can't hang with them if you heard our Mexico episode, uh, Cabo San Lucas, I think we talked about Mike and Carly and how we cannot hang with them. Wait, what? Why are they? Are they just? I mean, because you guys, oops, sorry, you guys are very young at heart. I would assume that you guys can hang with the best of them. <gasps> That's very nice of you, Phil. Um, 
I would say oh. to keep up with their margaritas or rum drinks, uh, I would probably need to do cocaine. <laughs> well, there. I mean, Anna Marie Island has the, the, powdery, the powdery white beaches. We are. In That's Florida. not all sand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so no. let's. Okay. So. I've tried in the past. I've failed miserably. What so. a cocaine. And it sucks. No, that was a long time ago. But uh, <laughs> what do we no, feel miserably? About, what? At keeping up with Carly and Mike. Oh, you can't do it. No, no, you I can't, can't handle it. No. So I didn't even try this time. It was off. The, it was off the menu for me. Uh, okay, so before we even go there, let's talk about the way to get into Anna Maria Island because. <laughs> If you look at a map or if you're looking at Google Maps or Apple Maps, whatever the case is, the bridge that takes you from Bradenton to Anna Maria really is just a few miles, but you will find that it will take you 30 minutes to get 10 miles. And you cannot figure out why. Like you're looking at this and you're like, well, I can see Bradenton is right there and I could see Anna Maria is right here. But the problem is, it's very similar to the Keys, the Florida Keys, wherein there's one way in yep. and one way out. Mm -hmm. So how long did it take to get on that island when we like when we got through Bradenton? Because you have to go through Bradenton. Yep. How long did it take from the moment we left downtown Bradenton to get to the island? At least another half hour. Easily. Maybe 40 minutes. Uh, we got all the way to the end of that street and got on the island. There's a park there or something? Or there's a, it's there's Bradenton like a, Beach. There's a beach, yeah. yeah. So that's Bradenton Beach? Yeah. Okay, so that's where many people were trying to park and get into that parking lot and yeah. everything. Uh, we hung a right and started headed north. And uh, fortunately for us, traffic like cleared up a bit after that. So yeah. But it took a minute to get past that stop. Okay, and then how long to get back? Oh, man, it was, uh, I mean, it probably took us an hour to get back to our hotel in Bradenton. I know. Because everybody was leaving the beach at the same time we were. Now, the beauty of this drive, uh, compared to the drive to the Keys, when you're driving to the Keys, you're literally going over water the whole time. And you are going over water as you're driving into Anna Maria Island. The difference is there's a lot of shoreline. So people literally would just park on the side of the yeah. road and like unload their jet skis, unload their boat. They would just throw a beach towel off the side of the road and get right in the water. So you didn't have to necessarily go all the way into Anna Maria True. Island to like, have fun. People are pitching pop-ups. Did you see, like, you know, when we were driving, it was like they had pop-up tents everywhere, like, yep. you know, just hanging with their feet in the water. Yep, and loading their jet skis right there yeah. off the side of the road. Yeah. That was pretty badass. So, okay, there's a little secret I want to tell everyone. Ooh, secret. Yeah. Secrets. So... When you want to go to a really nice hotel and spend the day uh, on the beach. So we're going to go to the beach, but we don't necessarily want to go to the public beach. You pick the finest resort in that area and you call them and you ask them if they have what's called a day pass. So you can act like you are staying at that resort the entire day for $35. Okay, that's I'm sold. Out of all of the things, all of the episodes we've recorded together, <laughs> this is the one I actually you just had me texted. A day pass. I texted Lucia. I said, "Hey, Google Anna Maria Island. We're gonna go." Yeah, and you're gonna get a day pass. So, I'm gonna tell you where to go. All right. So um, I told Carly about the day pass because she had found a couple of resorts that she wanted to possibly stay at. Um, they're very expensive. They're like eight hundred dollars a night. And so I said, no, no, no. I said, we're going to do a day pass. And she's like, what? And this is a girl who travels a lot. And I'm like, yeah, like the Four Seasons, any bougie hotel that is on the beach generally has a day pass. And you just have to call and ask them. I'm glad you said that because I can't think of a single place in Florida that I would be willing to stay for $800 a night. Yeah. If I had like my, my own like Waffle House... <laughs> I probably would stay. I probably would pay eight hundred dollars a night to, to invite all your friends Wait, to your yeah. waffle house. Private a private, a waffle, private house. waffle house. Yeah, absolutely. On yeah. the beach. On the beach. That that's worth eight hundred dollars a night. I think you're actually on to something there. I mean, I've seen waffle houses in Daytona, but not on the beach. Oh, uh, no, not at all. You can no. have a few Mai Tais, be a little tipsy, and go catch some waffles, and you're totally like no set way. for round two. Mm -hmm. I think he's on to something. Agree. Why don't they just take a few Waffle Houses and add a hotel next to, like, attached to it? Right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. what if you had a Waffle House? Let's just the say Waffle Daytona. Waffle House Hotel. 
Yes. Is that where we're going with this? Think, really? Have you been in a Waffle House? I know you have, Clinton, South Carolina. Uh, yeah, but let's say the hotel's a little nicer. Let's say they keep it a little cleaner. Let's say they don't greet you and like a dubious proposition. I do. I do think he's onto something. Honestly, I, I, I agree with the Waffle House on the beach. I'm not saying anything about that. I think a Waffle House run hotel on the beach is a bad idea. All yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so a bad idea. we digress. Okay. So let's go back. So anyway, so there were two resorts on Anna Maria Island. I called both of them. They both offered day passes for like 45 bucks. I was like, great, we're golden. Now is that the, per person? Per person. Okay. Yeah, but that's still a really good deal. Yeah, it's eight hundred. Okay, here's the benefit. Because you can use their pool, you can use their bathrooms, all Thank that Thank you. Stuff. I was just about to say that. Oh, sorry. So did I cut you it's off? It's totally fine. So go oh, ahead, babe. I got you, so excited you know, I knew the answer. You know all about the day passes. I so do you know go all ahead. about the go day ahead. passes. So tell everyone the beauty of the day pass. Well, uh, you get your loungers, you get the pool. If the ocean's a little too hot, you're down on the beach too long. Then you can come back, sit under one of the umbrellas, maybe get some drink service. Pop a bottle if you wish, uh, but then you have access to all the facilities, the little shower rooms, and probably even some towels, I would imagine. Yep. And no one knows that you're not a guest. And nobody knows you're not a guest, and you can waddle right up to the bar. Yep, and you can order food, all of that. So that's the beauty of the day pass, and if you ever or go to a resort town and there's a bougie hotel and you really can't afford to go there, but you really want to hang out with everyone else, ask about the day pass. So... We did, and the downside <laughs> is a narrator voice. We didn't get the day pass. No, we didn't, because here's what happened. <laughs> this particular hotel, they said I had to call the day of, and that they were at capacity, so they couldn't give out day passes. I called a few days before. They said, yeah, yeah, no problem. Then the day of, they're like, no, there's a problem. What's we're at capacity. What's the name of this hotel? Do you remember? I do. Okay. I don't want to tell everybody because if we go back, it's gonna. I'm not going to be able to get a parking spot. I mean, it's kind of like what we do, though. <laughs> okay. We, we are... I Journalistically, I think we're obligated. It's really to hard for me to give this name. <laughs> it's really hard. Okay, it's called the. I'm going to pronounce it wrong. Bai Ba Hai. I think it's B A I H A I Resort. The Bai Hai. Yeah. The, look it up, Phil. I know you're doing it right now. Oh, I'm looking at Waffle Houses. <laughs> on, on Anna Maria Island. <laughs> okay. So anyway, and then the Anna Maria. Uh, hotel, resort also is like the sister hotel and they also do day passes. Anyway, okay, all that to say, I'm, I have, there's a point to the story. We didn't get day passes. <laughs> That's the point. I know we didn't, but here's what we did get. When I was inquiring about the day pass, I asked the most important question, where is parking? Because you have to know, am I paying extra for parking? Uh, or is it included in the day pass? And this it's $800 for parking a day. No, it's not. <laughs> so this particular resort had parking an additional charge, which I think was like $25. But she said to me, we have parking right next to the resort. There are a few spaces. It's usually open. You should public. just, yeah, public parking, public parking, few spaces right next to the resort. Uh, come by. They usually are available. So we didn't get the day pass. But I did say to you as you were driving, yep. continue, let's go to the resort yep. because we might get lucky and, and find parking. And we were in a residential area. Mm -hmm. And if you are like the Florida beaches are interesting. They have a few parking spots in residential areas. We have to pay like $25. It's a meter, but that is how much it costs. And um, if you want to be not with the masses and you want to kind of be on what feels like a private beach, you pay it. So I knew going there, the parking would probably be the same as the resort was charging, $20, $25. I was fine with it. Um, we get there, and sure enough, there are four empty spaces that are public, and there is no charge at all. It is free, like zero. Like you just park your car, and you walk 10 steps, and you are on the beach. Yep. So we then three cars from the beach. Yeah. So then what we did is... Okay, here's the downside of being in a residential area uh, and, and being on their beach. There are no bathrooms. No bathrooms. We talking about you got the ocean. Okay, no. Okay. <laughs> what were you planning on doing in the bathroom? <laughs> well, no. <laughs> but, you know. Was it that kind of day? <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't. But I'm saying if it had to be, if it was that kind of day, what are you going to do? There are no public bathrooms. There are no public bathrooms. That is the problem. There so, is the salty ocean, however, the salty Gulf of Mexico. Okay, but here was our solution. We acted like we were guests of the hotel because the parking was right next to the resort. So we walked right up to the bar, 
We walked in the bathroom. We were in and out of that resort like we own the place. But how would we, they We how acted would they like know? we belong. They don't know. They can ask yeah. you for a room number, but if you pay cash, yeah. okay. they'll never know. So we just paid cash for everything. We got to use the bathroom. We got to order drinks there. Mm-hmm. Um, and we didn't obviously get to sit in the cabanas. So that was kind of a bummer because yeah, I really that needed that. I really needed that. Oh, we'll get to that. Don't worry. But uh, I know you're trying to like blow past it, but we're getting there. Go on. <laughs> but anyway, um, so... Yeah, so that is what we did. Now, we didn't stay on Anna Maria Island because Anna Maria Island is like most Florida beach towns. Wait, are you taking us back to Bradenton? No, I just want to explain like why we didn't stay on Anna Maria okay, Island. Okay, because I got I want to talk about the beach. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> so um, we didn't stay at the resort, obviously, it was $800 a night. And like most Florida, and I'm saying Florida because I don't know, I don't think this is – I know this is not the same in, in Los Angeles. Like Malibu doesn't have this. I could tell you that. And Santa Monica doesn't have this. But Florida beaches tend to have like really crappy hotels like the Seaside Inn for $99 a night. Yeah. And nobody wants to stay there. Or it jumps to like the $800 a night. Like there's hardly anything ever in the middle. What they do have a lot though are condos. So you have to do VRBOs or Airbnbs. And those can get pricey. Yep. So we ended up not staying on the island at all because there was nothing in the middle. There was no like Hampton Inn. There was, you know, no holiday. We were Express. only there for a night and we didn't want to sell the farm to be there. Right. That's yeah. how we felt. And we didn't want to do a VRBO or an Airbnb because it was the same. It was yeah. like still going to cost $500 for one night. And I don't know, like nobody wanted to pay that. Sheesh. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so anyway, so I just, I wanted to, if you're going to go to a Florida beach town, just that's kind of the vibe, like really, really cheap hotels or really expensive ones. Ju- you know, not everywhere, but a lot of places we have yeah. explored. Or we were going in the height of the season. I mean, come on, we were going like at the beginning of August. So, you know, End of July. The, pr- the prices are still high at that point. Yeah. So if you're going to go in, you know, September, October, you'd be fine. Maybe. I bet the prices drop. Okay. That's my theory. So how was the beach? The Tell beach, everyone what the beach looked like. Okay. The beach was, I already explained the beach, what it looked like. It was powdery sand, blue sky. Blue we did get a little bit of rain. There was a lot of wind. There was a lot of wind that day. Our umbrella flew away like two or three times. It did. Um, but there was also a 100% chance of drinking that day. Uh-huh. Like, yeah. And I, oh. uh, you know, Phil, you don't know this about me, but in the past, I was a bartender. I hesitate to call myself a mixologist because I really pride myself in creating rocket fuel to take people to the moon. Oh. And uh, it started on a camping trip way back in, where was that? Ojai? Where the hell did we go that one time in California where I made my epic margaritas for the first time? Uh, I don't know. I think it was Ojai. I think you're right. Something like that. Anyway, uh, I figured out a way sometimes, depending on the drink, to maximize the alcoholic content in the mixture and then sort of water it down. And uh, one pitcher will make you, I don't know, 30 drinks or something like that, right? And so uh, I didn't have quite the same size pitcher because I thought for sure we would get in trouble on Anna Maria Beach. But I did create a little mojito potion that (laughs) contained an entire bottle of rum a myriad of other secret ingredients that help the alcoholic content level. And then my theory was, well, we'll just take, you know, cause you generally mix it with club soda and ice and all that other stuff. So I was like, well, we'll just mix in some of the other stuff. And uh, when we get to the beach, everybody can have their own thermoses and yeah. all that other stuff. Like we were carrying around those um, hydros or whatever. Yeah. Your Stanley cups. Exactly. We didn't have Stanley's. We didn't have, we weren't that fancy. Oh, uh, you poros. <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> No, they're pretty, they're, they're, they're not Stanley's, but no, they're, they're, they're pretty big. Yeah. But yeah. yeah uh huh. Anyway. Uh, so I, as soon as we got there, I made Carly and Mike a drink and uh, they were like, wow, this is really good. And within a short yeah. amount of time, they were feeling great. It was 1030 in the morning. By it was the way. 1030 in the morning, okay. but you know, they were on LA time. So, I oh, think so that's, it was okay. 730 in the morning yeah, for them. Uh-huh. And so, perfect. <laughs> and so, uh, Denise, you were mellow at first, but then you're like, okay, make me a drink. So I made you a drink. And in retrospect, I probably made it a little too heavy uh-huh. for you. Yeah. And so. And I'm uh, not much of a drinker. She's not. 
And so she's out in the water. She's having her mojito fresh out of the thermos. And uh, you know, by the, okay, let me just say this, by the way, when you drink one of James's drinks, it, you're drinking it like it's a shake because it's so good. Like you don't even feel like it's alcohol. So you got this straw yeah. that's like the size of a pipe and you're like sucking on it. And you're like- I disguise, like you have to, I've learned, like Denise likes her drinks on the sweeter side. So I've just grown accustomed to making a drink feel like you're not consuming as much alcohol. It's so as dangerous. You are. I'm that way too. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You it's like them on the sweeter so side? so dangerous. And then get rocked? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I wasn't a big mojito drinker. I gave Denise hers. I said to Mike, hey, let's go take advantage. I think that bar is open over there at the $800 resort. And so I wanted something different. And he had already pounded his. And I think there was a little more left in the thermos at this point. Uh, you know, <laughs> like maybe Carly got another one. I'm not sure. They got a few, everybody got a few rounds except for you. You only had one. I did. One was plenty. Right. And so it was like a 16 ounce container. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. It was sizable. Uh huh. Um, so we go over to the bar and I said to Mike, you know, I knew we were going to be there for the next foreseeable five or six hours or yep. whatever. And I said, I said to Mike, you know what? I'm going to do a shot of tequila. So I did a shot. He did a shot with me. And this is now 1130 a.m. Yeah. So <laughs> so Mike is Mike is two mojitos, a shot of tequila. And then we ordered a round of Mai Tais. Did you, eat, did you eat anything yet? No, lunch hasn't even. No, like, oh. We don't even thought about lunch. No. Are you kidding? No. Yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. They're professionals. It's scary going with them. Like they are legit <laughs> professionals. They're good. Uh -huh. that's, that's a little too hard for me, though. Yeah, maybe, they, they maybe. were. They were. Uh, I mean, they. You know. Well, we'll get to that. Oh no. And so uh, we ordered a round of mai tais, and we come back to the beach, and I could already see glassy eyes here mm -hmm. out in the water, waving, smiling. Oh, she's frolicking. Oh yeah. <laughs> Already, did, I mean, it was like a matter of 20 minutes, 30 minutes for us to finally like get the drinks and come back. And uh, I could tell, oh man, this is going to be a good day. And so <laughs> so I handed her my tie because she was done with her mojito. And you drank that mostly. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. All of it? Uh-huh. I drank oh, the whole thing. Down the hatch. Yeah, uh -huh. Because uh, it turns out the bartender at the really expensive resort is also very good at making drinks. Uh -huh. that, that doesn't are, taste that like alcohol. And, yeah. Yeah. And so... Uh, so we're all out there in the water and everything, and uh, Denise <laughs> is hammered, and so oh. it's just so rare that it happens. Uh, but it was really funny. It was it was good. You were cute, um, a little you know clingy and purposefully oh. annoying me. Okay, Phil, I would you ever date a woman that was divorced? Yes. Would you marry her? Yes. Oh, okay. James tells me while I'm like on my second drink, that had I been divorced when we met, he never would have married me. At the age of 28. Why? Like, I still don't even understand. Like, I, I, I just know don't I think I would have done it. But why? I'm the same person. I, I just don't even understand. I am the same person. Why would you? So. I don't think you're the same person after a divorce. What do you think? I've still been fun loving. You were fun loving, yeah. That wouldn't have changed. I don't know. I just, whatever reason, I know who, how superficial I was at that age. It's more about me than about anybody who's divorced. I knew I was really superficial at that age. And I would have said, you know, I don't know. Sounds like a lot of trouble. I'm out. And so, yeah, uh, no, you I was have, like that. You, I know. I don't think you would. Have I, I know because no. you, you were hanging on me as the waves <laughs> were pounding us and you kept That's saying weird. over and over again, you would have made an exception for me. You would have made an exception <laughs> for me. You would have, and I go, I don't know, babe. Like, it might not have. I don't, I'm just being real. And she was like, she was like, no, you would have. And she was in my face and everything. And then, I don't know, out of nowhere, she decides, oh, I've had too much to drink. I'm going to go into shore, right? And so she goes into shore, and I already said that our umbrellas had blown away like two or three times. So at this point, we just threw the umbrella on the ground, <laughs> folded up, right? We're like, we're going to we're gonna kill somebody if this umbrella flies away on us anyway, yeah. because we were all in the water. Nobody was watching the umbrella. The umbrella was brought just for me uh -huh. because I don't do sun well. A and everyone of, knows that. Yeah, you are yeah. white. And a, so, a lot of people may not know this, but you are a pale white lady. Yeah, Carly is white, but she's really dark because she loves the sun. That girl just sits in the sun. She lays in the sun. Her husband, former lifeguard, yeah, former diver. Her husband's black. He doesn't like mind the sun. But Mike is black. Yeah, you 
don't mind the sun. I, on the other hand, do not like the sun. Everyone who knows this knows this. Yeah. Whoever who knows me knows this. So I always. The motto have to bring in our fella. family is "Mommy hates outside." So, oh. yeah. Uh, so Denise decides, you know what? I'm just going to go like chill for a minute. And she goes up to shore and I'm standing out there in the water with Mike and Carly and we're all BSing. And it's like, ha ha ha, he he, and we're talking or whatever. And this place is really nice and this is fun and all this other stuff. And then I look up the shore, you just see a sand dune and then you see one white knee sticking up <laughs> in the sky. And I was like, oh God. And it was hot. Hotter, like 100. It was hotter degrees than the that devil's day. nuts. It was so hot that day. And I was like, you know what? I got to go up there, guys. There was no umbrella. There I was, was just no laying on the sand, like, like just yeah. like a drunk person, like yeah. laying on the sand, just like laid out. Like, yeah. So as a white person, uh huh. does that mean you burn easy? Oh, I could have died. Mm -hmm. Like I could have had, I could have been in the hospital. Like if he didn't come and save me, between me saying to him, I can't believe you wouldn't have married me. I was telling him thank you for saving me because this is all before I, noon. Oh, we had. I mean, at this point, it's probably twelve thirty or something. Yeah. We did yeah. order some sandwiches eventually, but oh, it was so it took bad. a minute. Um, no, I walked up to the shore and there she was, like fully exposed in the sun, and I was like, "This is not going to end well." So uh, I put the umbrella up and I covered her with a beach towel, even though it was hot. But the beach towel was damp. It was like your body was being waterboarded. But, <laughs> but it got her out of the sun. Her toes oh, weren't going to burn. The tops of her so feet, bad. her legs weren't going to burn and everything. And so I'm laying there. And, you know, as I'm laying there and she's arguing with me drunk uh, about whether or not I would have married her, uh -huh. even though she was divorced, uh, you know, the sun started moving through the sky or whatever, and she was covered, mm -hmm. but I wasn't. So <laughs> like, eventually I got so scorched. Like I haven't, I think I've been sunburned maybe four times in my life. Now, uh, it was really bad. Like it lasted three or four days. I had skin peeling and all that yeah. other stuff. And I would have died. I would have straight up just died. You would have totally died. Yeah. yeah. Can, I, uh -huh. can I rewind about the divorce thing? Yeah. Quick? I was thinking about it. Would it have mattered if her former spouse, who her former spouse was? Maybe. Why? I don't know. It Which, just who depends. cares who the former spouse was? Because, I mean, if it was like Brad Pitt, you'd be like, sweet. <laughs> oh, yeah. If it was Brad oh. Pitt's one. Oh, wait a second. Yeah, so this is like, now dependent on, like, like, who my spouse was? But if your ex went to prison or something, then I'd be like, mm, I don't know. Yeah, There's questionable made, judgment somewhere going on here. Yeah, so who made. I, like, married is a deciding factor? On no, you, you told me no, you weren't going to marry you, me I was at all. Superficial, so you, you said you, you weren't going to marry me exactly. at all. But now, if you but found out it was Brad Pitt, it'd been different. Oh, uh, that's I insane. I would have wanted to hear more. <laughs> that? Because obviously, she still has this information. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you're like, look, give me to put me in a movie, you know, <laughs> oh. help a brother. I out. don't know if I was counting on that, but I'm saying it could help. Yeah. I don't know. It would have been an interesting story. Oh, right. so if I had slept with a, if I had been married to a football player, oh, it would have been okay. I, I didn't say that. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, he, he's asking me a hypothetical. And you're like, oh, maybe. I don't, I don't know. Maybe, he asked me, would it change the calculation, the yeah, algorithm? Yeah. I guess maybe, but I don't know. I still don't think so. I'm sticking to my guns on this. I don't think I would have. You are so lame. I know. I cannot believe I it. I was then. Now, it's not an issue for me. Well, you're like 100 years old. Everyone's divorced. <laughs> oh. Everyone's divorced. So you have no choice. What are you going to do? Marry an 18-year-old? What the hell? It, where is this conversation going? Well, I'm saying if you want to find somebody who's not divorced, you have to like go under the age of like Yeah, I, I think 20. everybody's clear on what you were saying. Yeah, no, I would not marry an 18-year-old. I know you wouldn't. Yeah. I know. I'm making a point. Right. So that's the only person that would not be divorced at this point in our lives. But in our 20s, it's like... Hmm. Wow. Do you know? In, it still bothers me. You know, my, my generation. Sorry. It's, uh, I know this is off topic, but it's it's funny and it's sad at the same time. So if a woman is over 30, 35 and single, not married, no kids, she's cool. But if but the guys, guys don't care. But for some reason, if a guy is single, no that kids, says something about it's him. like a red flag to them. Are you serious? Yeah. Like over thirty five. Yeah, with no kids, no, never been married. Wonder what that's that like is. a red flag to them. Wonder why. 
Uh, uh, if you're I in just the think comments, it's a you would have still married me if I was over 35 with a red flag. Oh, for sure. <laughs> There you go, Jamie. I thought she was going to deny all my it. I was trying to bait, bait her into making no, things even. All my boyfriends had red flags, okay? <laughs> no. One of them stole cars. So what are you talking about, okay? So no. All of my boyfriends are, had I red flags. I rest my case. Yeah. I rest my case. Okay. I do have to think about the... I think what it is, Phil, if, if I had to think about it and place myself in that situation, if a guy hasn't made a commitment to a marriage at that point, I think women feel like he's not committable. Like, I, I don't know why it's a double, why it's double standard for a woman. I'm not sure. Maybe because she's building her career or something like that. But um, there's a, there could be reasons why a woman didn't get married. Uh, and it seems okay, especially if they're trying to build their career. But when you meet a guy over 35 who hasn't been married, for a woman, they think he's not committable. He's just like a serial bachelor. No, he may date for a long time. He's just not committing to a marriage. Like he's not, I'm using non-committal. I say committable, it's a word I made up. He's non-committal. So you don't want to get involved with him. Like if he hasn't been married by 35 mm -hmm. or at least engaged, you're like, oh no. I have a friend who's, you know, my age, single, never been married, no kids. Great, great guy, great looking, you know. Why? Good, good head on his If he's great looking, good guy, Makes decent money. Why has he never been married? Because he likes money. Because he he focused on his career. The same reason why you just mentioned uh, with uh, with women. Yeah. He focused on. He's been in relationships. But, you know, they didn't work out. But he has a hard time dating because women are like because he's a black dude too. So they automatically assume he got baby mamas, uh -huh. right? <laughs> and he doesn't. And so they're like, Oh, what's yeah. wrong with you? Yeah, yeah, so that's it's so, true. It's, it's so weird. I don't know. I it's it is a do white people do that. Yeah, for sure. Really? For sure, 100%. So there's a white guy who's 37 years old, never been married, no kids. They'll think you're a serial killer. It's a killer. red flag. They think you're a serial killer. Serial killer. They'll, if you're black, they'll think you have baby mamas. If you're white, you're a serial killer. Yeah, you're Dexter. Yeah. Well, I could see that. And see, <laughs> it makes sense, right? It totally makes sense. Yeah, well, I can see that. Yeah, it totally makes I sense. I can see that. I know. So, but the anyway. whole, like, do you have baby mamas? I mean, that seems like it's easily overcome, right? Like, you could just say, no, look, there's, there are no children. There are no, you know. But then they think that's weird. <sighs> mm -hmm. uh, we Funny. can go down a whole rabbit hole. <laughs> that's a whole other episode. Be, yeah, I know. But I, I have to tell you, if I were 38 and I met a guy my age who had never been married uh, didn't have kids, uh, yeah, I'd be like, he's 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 a player, or he's like you say, a bachelor. What if he didn't want kids, and he was just like, you know what, I've dated before, or whatever, and I've dated a lot, and seems every girl that I've been serious with, or whatever, eventually came to me, had the talk, and said they want kids, even though they knew I didn't want kids. Oh, I'd I'd marry him. I know you would. <laughs> Because <laughs> you didn't want children. I would totally marry him. I'd be fine. Because that's a reasonable answer. That's a reasonable answer. I don't. I guess because women always think men can find time for a marriage. Men can find time for a marriage. You can build your career and still get married. You can build your bank account and still get married. Like women do think that. So why at 38 have you not been married? It's well, weird. Why can't we say the same thing for women? You can't build a career and have a relationship? No, because once you're married, a guy wants to put a baby in you. Absolutely not. You cannot get married and still have a career. It just doesn't work. You're mm. going to get pregnant. I'm going to agree with her on that. The way society is traditionally. Traditionally. Yeah. She's right. Denise is Although right. I know plenty of men that would be happy to take care of that baby while their wife went <laughs> off to work. So we knew a lot of people like that in L.A. Uh, yeah, but that's like not the norm. The norm is the woman has to, the Agreed. woman has to go back to work yeah. and take care of that kid while the husband does nothing all day. Uh, he has a job, but he comes home and doesn't help with the kid, right. doesn't help make dinner. In blah, blah, Iowa blah. City, that that LA model of family uh, finances is not going to work. I'm, what my point is is that my point the, is in the Midwest, you're right. It's not going to fly. What's not going to fly? What am I saying? The guy staying at home. I'm not, I'm saying that, yeah, like it does, guys don't stay at home generally. Like it's, it's both people have right, to work. We're saying the same thing. Okay. But what I'm saying is a little different is that both people go to work at nine o'clock, but at six o'clock, the woman comes home and starts dinner while the guy like is on his phone, is on his phone. 
<laughs> is that right? Yeah. And then she's, you know. Fantasy yeah. football. You, helping you know the kids I'm, with homework. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What I'm saying is you were drunk on the beach. So let's get <laughs> back to that. <laughs> so how about that for a segue? <laughs> uh, that may have happened. Yeah. And then and then he proceeded to like, we got home and he tells Ellie I got sick. And Ellie's like, wait, mom got sick? Oh, yeah. We, well, we left that part out. Eventually, I had to get her out of the sun. So I took her to the car. Yeah. I was not feeling well. Yeah. So wait, white people, when they get sunburned, they get like vomity sick or yes. because you drank too much? It was both. But for me, I really think it was sun poisoning. Like I, I was oh. just, it was hot and there was a lot of sugar. I hadn't eaten. I mean, I had, I did finally eat, but um, it Bro, was just Bro, are you sure she's not a vampire? I know. <laughs> I, I she do, could be a vampire. Have you seen Blade? I think I saw I, ashes <laughs> flying in it, like uh, off her skin. <laughs> so at one point I say to him, I go, I'm wrapped up in this towel that is like, I'm sunburnt. It has sand on it. It's wet and disgusting. And I say to him, I need to get out of the sun. I like knew enough to know I wasn't doing well. And I said, I need to get out of the sun. And he said, I said, I think I need to go to the car. And then he said, yeah, he goes, let's just put you in the car. I'll turn the air conditioning on. You can just lay down in the car. And Carly came up. Okay. Have you guys seen that, that reel where the kid goes, oh, Jessica, Jessica. And it's <laughs> no. this she gets washed up in the waves. Oh no. It's this lady who is walking into the beach and the waves hit her and then she can't get up. And this little, it's, it's obviously a voiceover and it's this little kid going, Jessica, Jessica, oh, she can't swim. And then the lifeguards, mm -hmm. this is really real. The right lifeguards run, they're trying to pull her, but they get knocked down by the water. So Carly comes walking up to the shore, uh, to the beach where I'm laying like dead. And she goes, oh, Jessica. <laughs> Jessica, <laughs> she's drunk too, by the way. Okay, and it's only one o'clock. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So he took me back to the car. I just had to get out of the sun. It was a hot mess. I was, I was so burnt. And then what I hate the most is like when you're burnt. And like later that night, we had we went to dinner. Is when you're burnt, and then someone has to come up to you and go, "Oh, you got a lot of sun." <laughs> yeah, Phil, you don't get that too often. You know, surprisingly. Um, I may look African American on the out, on here, but like on the outside, my skin color. I'm not, I'm actually not wearing a shirt. I'm actually I'm actually <laughs> quite yellow. I am a Simpson <laughs> underneath here, so I am I am I'm very yellow. But yes, I will I will burn. You oh. will burn. Yes, the twenty five percent of white person I have in my DNA causes me to burn. Oh, okay, oh, then you know my pain. Uh, that's an unfair. You know draw. my pain. Oh my gosh, and that's what happened. I actually was so not feeling good that when he picked me up to get me off the beach towel. I ran to the car to get out of the sun, to get out of the sun. I was like, yeah. Oh, I'm going to die. But, um, <laughs> so yeah. So and Carly and Mike, they just hung out on the beach some more while I laid in the yeah, car. Yeah, they did. They actually walked up, I guess there's like a beach club or something up yeah. in, like, uh -huh. a little ways. Yeah. Uh, so we just sat in the car, ran the air conditioning. Eventually it was time to go back to the hotel and I was relieved cause I wanted to get out of the sun. I was the only sober one in the group. And, uh, then we spent about an hour getting back into Bradenton. I know that was the worst. I was just sitting in the car like, Oh, please get me to the night all i kept thinking about was a nice cold hotel room like yeah. a really cold hotel room but so when you're driving back do you like since you're like in pain yes. and kind of groggy do you guys li listen to music or do you sit there in silence we have music on oh you guys were playing music yeah yeah it was we're probably playing. making you more sick it was i think probably yeah. <laughs> I, I was so out of it it didn't matter actually <laughs> yeah so that was look it was a really like it, w it was a beautiful day until until, until it wasn't until yeah. it wasn't yeah but i do have some stats so look like well, i didn't i did some homework because i wanted to know a little bit about anna maria island like could we live here i'm taking my notes you cannot live there i oh. cannot live there oh none of us in this Wait, room can is live there I'm, is it because we're black it's not because you're black oh, oh no. okay, it's, okay. It, it's because none of us in this room make that much yeah so do you the, uh, you've never heard of this place and you've lived here for 20 years and let me just tell you the average home which is a condo is seven hundred thousand dollars a god darn condo for uh -huh. seven hundred thousand dollars yeah. yeah and that has decreased by ten percent since last year so it'd be like what seven hundred seven seventy yeah seven seventy so um yeah so uh houses stay on the market around 114 days uh compared to last year which was just 40 days so houses mm. were really flying last year um houses can go up to eight million dollars so i found a house it's 6.9 million. Let me just give you the stats on it. 6.9. Yeah, let me let me give you the stats on it. So it's 4,000 square feet, four bedrooms, three and a half bath. Um, it's on 
the tip of the Anna Maria Island called Bean Point, which I mentioned earlier. There's only two houses on that part of the North Island, northern part of the island. There's only two houses that sit back from the um, road. So this this house is one of those two houses. So it basically, it sits back from the road. The driveway's really long. It, your view is just the beach, and there the only thing around you is the other house. It's just you two on this little stretch of the beach. Nice. And um, yeah, and that was six point nine million. Mm. Uh, and it's then a little prohibitive. Yeah, the, the cost for us. Yeah. So the low price. So I had said that the average price. Let me. I'm so sorry. I need to correct myself. I said the average price was like seven hundred thousand dollars. I'm so sorry. I stand corrected. That's like the lower end. Oh, gosh. the actual price. It's worse. <laughs> That's not the average. The, ag- the average. My my apologies. My, the average, one point one million. One point one. Yeah, and that is for um, a like uh, two bedroom, two bath. But you guys, you guys are from LA though. That's like normal prices in LA though, right? It is, but there's something about like something about being in Florida, and that whole mindset that you've had for a hundred years that Florida's cheap, you just can't wrap your head around. Like, I'm not going to buy a house in Florida for a million dollars. No, it's a cheap place to live. Why am I going to do that? So how much would that house, the 6.9 house in LA cost? That would be in Malibu. Uh That'd be 20 million. Yeah, for sure. On a private beach, 20 million for sure. That's a private beach that they were on. Yeah, Yeah. Bean Point. That's what I was going to say. I mean, there are people buying houses for a million dollars or whatever right now in L.A., and they're sort of your average suburban home. Um, but for us personally, I mean, we did not buy our house for that much. We we sold it for that much, but we didn't buy it close to that. We bought it, you know, 20 years ago for $340,000. So. But still, even then, that was really expensive. So the point being, like, we're used to those high prices. I still think 1.1 isn't worth in a Florida coastline, if I'm going to pay 1.1, I'm not going to do it in Florida. I don't. I don't. Well, know. why? I'm not for, hold not on. For hold a on. Two plus two. Why though? You see, Florida is beautiful. Like honestly, you you the, the stuff a, that you described about Anna Maria Island is it sounds like a dream. It is gorgeous. Why? It's not worth it. Is is it because it's a red? Is it because it's a red state? It still has a white trash element. <laughs> Some parts, if you go north of Gainesville, but see, even like the Florida <laughs> beach towns, like. Uh-huh. Even that area, as expensive as it was, you know, Cocoa Beach is really expensive. It there, still has a white trash element. I don't know why. Like because Cocoa Beach is never mind. Okay, so okay, so with, with dance. <laughs> so I'm not far off then. Like, I don't know. I just I would never pay a million dollars for a two plus two. I just wouldn't do it. I don't care where it is. So well, it's not quite a two plus two is seven hundred thousand. Would you pay seven hundred thousand for a condo? No, so I don't think it would. See, yeah. what, what I've learned, because I know people who live all over the state, what I've learned is that the east side of Florida, uh, along the beach, along the coast, so like Brevard County, that is the white trash, the tan white trash. You're talking about Fort Myers and all those? Nope. No, no, that's the east called. side. Oh, the, the east, east side. side. So we're talking Daytona. So, Sorry, yeah, they, direction yes. challenge for so Daytona, on Cocoa, the west Orman, side is the more come from New York Live down I see here that because that's, that that's Naples. Naples. Yep. That's um. That's also West Sarasota, Palm, right? Isn't that West Palm over there? Uh-huh. Or is West Palm on the other side? West Palm West closer, the other side. closer to the east, but oh. it's Naples, Sarasota, uh, Clearwater. Yes. All those Saint areas. Saint Pete, Saint Pete yeah. even yeah. Tampa, and just, yes, you know, those are all true. like the. They're not from that area, right. so I would, I could, I could see something costing a million dollars there, and it'd be justified. If you bought a million dollar house in Cocoa Beach or Cape Canaveral, yeah, you white, you tan white trash. Sorry, guys, but <laughs> I need to think about that. Then, I mean, what you're saying is valid. I mean, it is nicer. It was nicer than Cocoa Beach for sure. It's a beautiful area. I mean, they have a resort for eight hundred dollars a night. Like their house is for seven million dollars. So, yeah. um, I just don't know. Like, could I live there? I say no, because I don't want to live. If I'm gonna pay that much money, I don't want to be in Florida. It's so crazy. I know, like what Phil's saying is right. It's beautiful. I just don't want to live there. I like, think y'all are too too cultured. But <laughs> I think you, no, really, you clearly do not know us as well as I thought you did. <laughs> no, because you guys have gone and seen so much, so you know what a million dollars will buy in Tennessee. That's you true. know what a million dollars will buy in New Jersey. Big, you know what I'm saying? You know, yeah, you know what a million dollars will buy. Yeah. So I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. 
Yeah. You I c- think I would spend that million dollars and maybe have a lake house and not necessarily have a condo on the beach in Florida. I think there's a different way to spend that money and get something similar and not it be in, in Florida. Mm. I don't know. Like, hey, I actually would spend a million dollars on a house in a Corpus Christi on the beach, like uh, Padre Island. It doesn't have the same element, I feel, that Florida does. Disagree. Oh, okay. Yeah. I would sooner buy a million-dollar house in Florida than in Corpus Christi. Okay. Well, yeah. we agree to disagree. Okay, so what was your take on, like, okay, so what was your take on Anna Marie Island? I mean, you really, like, knew nothing about it. How'd you feel? <laughs> Zero. I knew he nothing just, about it. He knew nothing. All I did was mix drinks and uh, get in the car. Yeah, uh, it was awesome. We are going there again. We I don't. Want, I have no. I no. have no desire to live there. I want to come. But oh um, yeah, okay. Let's do a beach day. I'm, I'm being yeah. for real. Let's no, get the families because, together. Okay, here's what happened. We were in the water, and he he hardly ever says this. Uh, he we're in the water, and he looks at me. We've been in the water maybe like an hour, and he says we're coming back. And I was like, whoa. He he looked around. He's like, this beach is amazing. This place is amazing. It was he easy said, in, easy out. It took, easy a little, in, easy. took a little while, but it wasn't we'll, like a hassle. To we'll get go to in. my secret location. Okay. Um, yeah. Your, your, your body print is still there from all the dead, I'm sure dead it is. skin. Yeah. I think it is. There's still I like dried is. up mint leaves from her <laughs> mojito laying on the beach there. But the fact that he said, I'll come back, let's mm-hmm. do this again. I was in shock. I was like, wow, okay, we're really going to do this. So we are going to go back and you're going to come and bring the fam. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually I'm 100 percent down. Like all the tri- all the places you said, I was going, you know. But this one, like, it's one of those I places legit though go. where you probably should spend the night. And we went and stayed the night in. Oh, and that's another thing I would say if you're going to go, um, okay, and you can a swing staying in an- on Anna Maria Island. F- sure, do it. But for us, we stayed in Bradenton and we stayed in Hampton Inn. It was really reasonable. It was like 150 dollars a night. And the pier, because it sits right near the pier of Bradenton have has beautiful restaurants so we just walked to a really nice restaurant and then yep. in the morning we walked to historic downtown Bradenton and had breakfast so my recommendation is go to Anna Maria Island save the money on the hotel and go stay in Bradenton and enjoy a really beautiful dinner there and a great breakfast the next morning and a lot of nightlife there there yes. are so many bars and clubs and yes. Irish pubs and, and there's waffle stuff. houses in Bradenton so there's a Waffle House <laughs> in Bradenton. We will find you yeah. a Waffle House. I'm sure there is. We found a good diner. Yeah. It's pretty good. So, um, yeah. So, you could live there. No, I could not live there. You just said you could live there. No, I said we would go back to visit, but I can't live there. Oh, no. okay. Yeah, no. How many black people did y'all see? I don't want to live in Florida. So. I think the only black person I saw was Mike. Yeah, besides Mike. No, there were other black folks there. There were two black girls. Our umbrella almost hit them. I had to apologize really? to them. Really? You probably oh. like did on purpose. She's not the person to ask Phil. She was a little inebriated <laughs> that day. <laughs> That's funny. There were plenty of people of all stripes up and down Anna Maria Island. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So you'll be fine. I'd move there. Uh, you know what? You would probably love it. It's very pretty and very easy to get around. So we just need to find that 1.1 mil for you. Yeah. That's and right. I bet you all of them would love to start a podcast. Oh, I think they would too. I was just going to say, we need to book some more time with you, yeah. and then you'll be all set. Yeah. You'll be on your way. <laughs> so anyway, um, all right. Well, uh, anything else on Anna Marie Island? That was fun. Uh, no, I'm really glad that we went, and I'm so glad we did this episode, because originally we talked about it, and it was like, do we want to do an episode about it? Because it wasn't like a place that we stayed in for a very long uh, period of time. But the truth was, so many people kept saying to me, where is this? I've never heard of it. I was like, we have to talk about it. Agree. We yeah. are a travel podcast and we traveled there. We and did. And we did it and it was cool and it was awesome and we had fun and I had a good story to tell afterwards about mom getting drunk on the beach. <laughs> so uh, Glad I could oblige. <laughs> yeah, you did a good job. Uh, okay, so moving on real quickly though, I want to talk about a subject travel related. Uh, sustainable travel. I keep hearing about it. I've been hearing about it for 10 years. I finally had to dig in and say to myself, why, like, what does it exactly mean? You think we would know at this point? I know there are hotels where they don't do your laundry every single day. I know that, you know, they will give you uh, water out of like a dispenser rather than bottled water, those kind of things. But what does it really mean? So uh, I'll tell you, the United Nations World Tourism Organization such a thing, uh, says travel that takes full account of its current and future economic, social, and environmental impacts addressing the needs of visitors, the industry, the environment, and host communities is 
identified as sustainable travel. So okay. that's a big generic definition. Uh-huh, that's huge. Okay. Generic. Let's get into it. Travel accounts for more than 5% of global warming. Oh, I believe it. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't sound like that much, 5, 000, 5%. 5 percent's a lot. I know. Yeah. So just basically mostly uh, planes taking people back and forth. So that's one of the biggest contributors, but there are other reasons. Uh, three quarters of global travelers state in surveys that they want to travel more sustainable. 90% of them say they look for sustainable options when booking. I don't think that's true. Nope, that's a lie. That does not feel good. It does that's not feel lie. right, right? Nope, that's a lie. Um, but as environmentally I, conscious as we try to be, we don't do that. There are, yeah, there are plenty of times where we're at a pinch and we're just like, let's get a place to stay. Exactly. Or let's go here. Or how do we get there? And they say, well, you know, go take this tugboat filled with diesel <laughs> fuel spilling into the bay. Uh huh. So I, can I say something about the global warming? This is going to make you laugh. Go ahead. You said all travel. Is five percent, right? Yeah. Guess the percent of cow farts. This is real. It's got to be like 20, 22 percent. Cow something. farts make up for global warming. Oh yeah, contribute. You didn't know that. What? Oh my god, they talk about it all what the time. What are you talking about? The yes, beef this, industry. This is real. The beef how industry much, much? contributes so much. It consumes a lot of water, and then the cows have I've this like flatulence that. issue. Yeah. Okay, my guess is it's got to be twenty percent. It's ten, but it's more than the travel. Wow. Cow. Cow farts. So we could travel wherever we wanted if we just declared war on cows. You could. Just be a vegetarian. That's all you need to do. I just had to throw that in there. It was real. It was real. I it is it real. I looked I it up. I've real. never heard that. That's so crazy. You didn't know that? The fact that both of you knew that is really odd. I think it's a guy fact. You don't. You guys don't remember I was on that game show? That question that they asked me? They, you were on the game show, but what was the question? That question about the cow farts. The cow farts I didn't remember yeah. that. That's how he knows it. Yeah. Right off the top of his head. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> Cows. I did not remember they asked you that question. I know you were on the show, and I remember some of the questions, but that one I did not remember. Yeah. Wow, it's a thing. Okay. Cows are just takers. They're delicious. Um, okay, so uh, let's think about some ways that we can travel sustainably then other than just getting on that tugboat with a diesel fuel. Number one, pack light. The weight of the plane has a direct impact on carbon emissions. Oh, okay. If more people packed less and swapped out their chemical products with more eco-friendly ones, it would go a long way. Nope. The planes would just pack more people in them. They would pack more people in them. Yep. But it still wouldn't weigh as much if people didn't bring as much. I already saying, pack light. If, if everybody packed light, I don't pack light. they would just add more seats. No, because doesn't the luggage go underneath the plane? Yes. True. So you would the seats are the seats. So you still would, if you pack light, you still would have less weight. Because they're not adding more they seats. The they're seats just, even tighter than yeah. they already are. Is that what you're <laughs> saying? They just throw people <laughs> underneath. Yeah. <laughs> That would be brutal. Uh-huh. Um, okay. Number two, take a train or car instead of a plane whenever possible. Uh, we do that. Use public transportation too. We try. We do. Montreal. It was very yeah. easy, uh-huh. if you remember. If it's available, we use it. Is that a bus? Absolutely. Uh, Montreal train. had a killer, like you would not believe the train system there, yeah. the rail system, uh, subways, all that. It was and they have buses too, but we and use they have an it. underground city that's all linked to all the trains. Yeah, so you can go shopping there. Did we record that episode here? I think we did. Did we? Did. we? Yeah, yeah. Phil wasn't listening that day. Okay. Phil, no, I'm just saying because when you, when you hear public transportation, I just think of bus. Yeah. No, this was subway. Yeah, because yeah, we don't have that here. No, I know it's a bummer. And when they built this city, it was so easy to do. There was so much space. They could have somehow done some sort of rail system and they didn't yeah they could have poached uh, some ideas from disney I city think. planning Had a wasn't a rail going all over i know right I don't yeah. know. orlando you have some work to do if you must fly pay a little extra to fly direct multiple takeoffs and landings impact emissions makes sense no but that's not really our fault because the train i'm um, sorry the plane uh industry has made it so difficult for you to get to places directly now have you noticed that like when you book a flight there's always a layover somewhere where it, it can never used be, to be like that this is just a notion that if you can fly direct yeah. and you can afford it and you are socially conscious like you say you are pay an extra hundred bucks for your flight okay okay uh, support local businesses and restaurants when traveling. If a place is locally sourced, 
Their goods and food don't require the shipping over great distances that contributes to higher CO2 levels. And they often don't require the same energy needed to produce plastic packaging or other things to keep food from spoiling, for instance. Uh, So that's a good one. And I think that's really easy to do. We're going to get into some countries in a minute and you're going to say to yourself, holy cow, I like what they're doing. Um, Eco-friendly lodging. We talked about this already. You don't need fresh towels every night. Check whether or not there's a lot of eco friendly lodging that you're seeing all over like Instagram now and TikTok, like tree houses where it's all solar powered yeah. and you're getting your water from like rainwater, sustainable or yeah. wind energy mm-hmm. or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, uh, check whether or not your hotel has a green key that distinguishes it for their eco practices. Is it eco or echo? Eco. I think it's eco. Eco, eco practices. Yeah. Airbnbs in Europe can also earn energy performance certificates to entice those travelers to care about their carbon footprint. Okay. They are a little more conscious in Europe. And the last rule is uh, if you really care about it, get outside. There are endless possibilities. Iceland, Costa Rica, New Zealand are always top destinations. I have a few more if you want. Japan. Japan. I think there was a place in Japan, but that's not on my list. I mean, they don't even allow litter. What? They don't even allow they, litter. You're right. They don't. Japan's got to be. Amen. Yeah. You think China would have picked some of that stuff up from them, considering everything I've heard about China? Yeah. I don't think so. Valencia, Spain received the European Green Capital Award because it's currently tracking a target goal of 100% of its electricity from renewable sources by 2025. That's oh my next gosh. year. That's amazing. A city like Valencia. It's a pretty big city in Spain. Well, you, so, see, you know what they need, right? What do they need? Freedom. Freedom. We, America's going to come there. And they have freedom. Take, I know. I'm Spain saying has the, 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 the United Corporations of America will oh, not yeah, allow yeah. that oh. to right, happen. Right. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah, your point right is well that. taken. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. British Petroleum has something to say about that. Um, they currently have a place called the Huerta, which is 46 miles of produce farms that supply local markets and restaurants. Not much petrol is required to get the goods to the stores. That 46 square miles is there in Valencia. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, Marrakesh, Morocco recently saw a 6.8 magnitude earthquake in 2023, but all the main attractions have reopened. And some tour companies have seriously pivoted to helping the region's recovery by boosting tours in the Orica Valley, which is a hiking paradise. And I guess they are booming right okay. now. Okay. Yeah. Well, you got to be careful with some, like sometimes people come and they destroy the land by the hiking. They do. Yeah. But I think if you're just walking. Eh, just depends. It's a lot better than dirt bikes or ATVs. Yeah, I guess so. Just got to be <laughs> careful. Too many people can destroy the terrain. Very true. Uh, Singapore. Any oh. interest in going to Singapore? No, I'm not like big on visiting Asia. I, you know, I have not been interested in that. Really? Yeah. I just, there's so much I want to see and Asia is not on my list. I just, I want to go to like Italy. Mm. Fair enough. What about Singapore, Phil? Not not Singapore, but I would go to Thailand, Thailand. or Indonesia or Japan. Before you'd go to Europe? Mm. If you had a choice right now, Italy, Greece, Thailand, or Japan. Japan. Oh, you and James, you guys can go on your Japanese trip. I yeah. want to go to Japan. Like, Japan. I'll get out. Yeah. Because Japan is like 30 years ahead of us. So yes. I would want to just... Take it all yeah. in. Yeah. Take it's it all crowded, in. but I think once you get out in the countryside. James, we're over six foot. We can see over everybody. I know. It's true. <laughs> it's true. It just takes you a little while to like weed through everybody to get to where you're going. Uh, Singapore was designed way back in 1967 to be a city in a garden. Oh. And all these years later, it's proven successful. Their coolest flex is a bio digester that converts food waste into soil and water for cleaning. Whoa. So, yeah. So they great. took composting to a whole new level. To a whole new level. They have wow. this fancy machine that... And it uh, compresses it to water. That's it, pretty incredible. It compresses all the water out of it, and then they obviously filter that, and it's good for cleaning water. Huh. So. Isn't, that, isn't that what cruise ships do? I think so. <sighs> yeah. yeah. They, oh, they have the same similar. technology, I believe, don't oh, they? Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think they do now. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Um, Belfast, United Kingdom. The Northern Ireland capital is a template for sustainability and went from the 47th city in 2023 in terms of sustainability to 11th this year. In one year, they jumped 
30 plus, they do. 37, 36 what spots. they do, get rid of the gasoline? Uh, more than 90 hotels, restaurants, and attractions are cr- accredited with its accelerated success. They've all bought into this idea of being sustainable. Well, that's amazing. Pretty awesome, huh? We could take a tip from them. We could. And so all those came from the BBC. Uh, these are the... Uh, here are some other ones from uh, Lonely Planet. Oh, before I get to that, though, uh, we should note that Maui, which had the fire, it was actually a year ago yeah. mm. in 2023, uh, has been slow to open. Lahaina is still closed, but Kanapali and a few other areas, including the road to Hana, uh, are reasonably open to visitors. They've taken a very responsible approach, trying to balance getting the tourism workers back to work and uh, then also paying attention to the eco- ecosystem's recovery. So that's crazy TBD on what Maui does in the next year or so. But according to Lonely Planet, here are some of the favorites, uh, the usual favorites, uh, Ecuador. Oh, everyone loves Ecuador. Everyone talks about Ecuador. Here's something I didn't know about Ecuador. 6% of all species on earth live in Ecuador. 6% in that little country. 6% of all the species on earth, insects, mammals, reptiles, whatever, that's a really small microcosm to have that. Like, it's a small... Well, they haven't destroyed their terrain. They exactly. haven't destroyed their jungles. Yeah. Do you remember we were supposed to go to Ecuador? I do remember we were supposed to go so to Ecuador. So, Phil, we were supposed to go to Ecuador, James and I. So, probably, like, 15 years ago, a group of our friends were going to Ecuador. And I said, I want to go. And James was like, I don't know if I want to go. It's going to be expensive, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, when are we ever going to get a chance to go to Ecuador? Our friend's son lives there. He's a tour guide, whitewater rafting. He has a family there, and he was going to show us around for 10 days. Mm. So I totally didn't listen to James, and I booked these tickets on American Express. They were like <laughs> $1,000 each. Ooh. Uh-huh. And so I was like, you were going to Ecuador. So we would get these group emails, because this was nobody had phones that were texting back then. So it would be an email, a group email. And James was really mad that I booked these tickets, because he's I like, was. He was like, I don't Things feel- were tight at the moment. Yeah. And he's like, and I don't want to take off of work. And, you know, I just thought he really needed the time to go and visit. It's like a very guy trip. It felt like all the things we're going to do. And I'm getting these emails every day about like, oh, okay, plan for this on this day, plan for that. And like, it sounded like it wasn't turning into a vacation anymore. It was turning into like a hiking expedition. A mission. <laughs> Completely. So I was getting a little nervous. And then one day I got an email And it talked about getting a headlamp. Like, so the group email was like, we're going to go cave exploring and everybody needs to get a spelunking. Oh, hell no. Everyone needs a, (laughs) that's what happened. You know what? I do a lot of white people stuff, Phil. Cave spelunking is not on my radar. So when I saw that, way too claustro. When I saw that email, I hit reply all and I just said, we're out. And my friend emailed me immediately and said, are you sure? And I'm like, oh no, I'm out. I'm like getting up at 6 a.m. I could have handled, even though I'm not a morning person, getting taking a bus up the mountain for two hours. I could have handled. But the headlamp, I'm out. I'm totally out. (laughs) The headlamp was a deal breaker. Didn't get a refund on the tickets. Nothing. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. I had to hear about Ecuador for a really long time. Yeah. If you were were planning a guy trip, Colombia would be the one to go to. Oh, really? Yeah. (laughs) Oh, okay. Is it sustainable? I mean, I don't think anybody's thinking about that. I don't think anybody's thinking about that. There, there is a lot of sustainable energy there. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we didn't go to Ecuador. We missed out on rainforests and 20 active volcanoes. But hey, that's fine. Uh, Patagonia <laughs> is also another popular one. Uh, glaciers meets jungle in Argentina and Argentina and Chile. Uh, Greenland, which, by the way, is not always green. It can get really cold, but it also has a killer view of the Aurora Borealis. Okay. Aliens. The northern lights. You think they're aliens? Yeah. Oh, it's the refraction of light in the Earth's atmosphere. Caused by aliens. (laughs) Okay, we'll go with that. Uh, And then there are also Wales, Portugal, and Palau. Palau? Palau. Where is that? Uh, it's near Australia. Oh, okay. Where eco conscious travelers are rewarded with tours only locals know. And uh, you can go diving, kayaking, all these hikes 
that if you are uh, so inclined to go to this mm-hmm. island, the locals will take you wait and show the, you the Wait secrets. till the white girls get on Instagram. <laughs> That's right. Spoil it. I don't know. To me, that sounds like a trip you go to and you may not come back. Yeah. But anyway, that place and the photos of Ecuador, I mean, between that place, Pala, I know I'm butchering the name, Palau, um, and Ecuador. That means I think we should put both of them back on the dartboard. Oh, okay. Yeah. You want to do a try Ecuador? I definitely want to try Ecuador. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I still, I'm not sure. I mean, it's still a lot we'll of walking. Up at seven. It'll be fine. I'll carry the headlamp. <laughs> okay. I'm in. If you're, you're carrying in. the headlamp, I'm in. All right. So anyway, that was my little deep dive into sustainability. And now I know better. Oh, good. Do better. Do You do better. I do try. Why are you looking at me like that? You try? Of course. Do we try to be as sustainable as we could be? I travel light. I never turn in my towels. I'm in a a hotel ever. True. I'm always turning off the water when I take a shower. Um, I don't know. You do that? All the time. Oh, shoot. I don't do that. Well, your showers only take two minutes, so you're fine. I'm not the sustainable one. You're oh. fine. You're showering. I overpack and I, take, but I, but and I take a full shower. It's like, but there's so many other things that, like, we're not doing that, like, are almost it's just so difficult. Like, I don't compost. How can I? No, um, I don't compost. But you know, our car could be more fuel efficient. Like, there are a million things that we could do. I remember, so when we started this podcast, I have a friend who is, you know, supposedly environmentally conscious. I mean, you know, when we were in college together, he didn't own a car because he just felt like it was buying into polluting the environment, but he always borrowed my car. So I didn't understand. <laughs> so <it>. he was poor. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was it. That is his code. So then when we started this travel podcast, because he always has something to say, he texted me and said, oh, you know that travel, like, uh, basically like what your stats were, you know, like your new, your new venture is going to destroy the environment. I was like so in shock that he said this to me. I was like, so we're trying something new and you're going to send this to me like that I'm destroying the environment. You want a coffee shop. Do you know how much Amazon jungle is destroyed an hour for coffee beans? Like, do not tell me. Like, so I always think like you have to be really careful when you talk about like how great you are with the environment. You may be great in one avenue. So sure, you don't own a car, so you're not polluting the environment, but you're tearing down the rainforest with your business. So don't come at me, because I'm going to come at you. Damn. I think we're going to end on that note. Empty nest, full tank. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.